Felix here, and welcome to this live stream on a particularly exciting morning for us investors, old bankers and whatnots, because, well, we've just had producer price inflation in, which is the most exciting thing to happen this side of Christmas, and it's come in, well, not where you wanted it to, to just, just a slight warning there. And then, of course, We've got the madness of SMCI up another 7% today, trading at $1,078. This was a $300 stock a couple of weeks back. And we need to talk about that. We need to understand where that means historically, where does that place us? Are we now in dot-com bubble territory? Yes or no? How do we make money out of this? And so on. So let's get cracking, shall we? Let me share my screen with you. Here she is. And... Zoom in a little bit. So let's look at the PPI data first. And PPI data was a little bit of a disaster. Um, basically, we would like inflation to be lower. I think most of us are probably with that script because, well, that's what Papa Powell wants, but Papa Powell wants, Papa Powell gets. Otherwise, rates stay higher for longer, and that's not a theme song we want to be singing. So we've got, um, got a black pen today. That's unusual. We were expecting about a 0.1% PPI. I say we, the Muppets who call themselves economists on Wall Street, who get polled on this stuff, we got 0.3%. Uh, that's obviously bad. I say obviously it's three times higher, so inflation is higher. Producer price index inflation tends to drizzle down to you and me, the consumer, because what we are buying from manufacturers will be more expensive. We then have core PPI, which we were expecting to be 0.1%, coming in at 0.5%. Shoot me now. That's obviously a huge, huge, hugely larger number than we thought. Combine that with the CPI inflation data we had, which was also higher than expected, and things are starting to look a little bit dicey on the rate cut front. Building permits? Yeah. Worse than expected. So we're looking at an inflationary recession this morning. Just saying, right? Housing starts 15% down. It's not really good. And if you strip out food, energy, and trade, you actually have a worse inflation reading than, than we have on the headline number. So it's, it's, it's just not good. It's not, not a good number. Is the market completely losing its mind over this and freaking the heck out? Let me have a look at the pre-market here. Small caps were down, which is good because I have a bearish trade on small caps. I'd quite like them to be about 2% lower. So if I manifested that, I apologize. NVIDIA is up because semiconductors have no relationship with the real economy. But Apple down half a percent. Meta is a bit down. Amazon down a touch. Tesla up 1.2%. Uh, fat drugs rebounding apart from yesterday's drop and banks are looking a little bit gloomy. But it's a it's a flat market, right? It's not the end of the world. If we look at futures, the futures bright, the futures orange. You'll only get that if you were in the US, uh, UK rather. It was an advert in the noughties for a mobile phone company. Um, the S&P is basically flat. That's okay. QQQ is up even a teeny bit, probably because of NVIDIA, and, and so not looking too terrible. But it is a bit of a warning shot, and you can understand why small caps are down, because those guys actually have to go to the bank to borrow money. So we're down 1.2% at 202. I thought it would end at 200 this week, and, and I hope I'm right. <laughs> we'll find out uh, later on today, and I'll let you know whether my trade lost or made me money uh, by on Saturday or on Monday. We're up still 13% this year. I say still. We actually had a very good start to the year. Uh, that's only a month and a half into it. We did 100, 526% last year. Uh, that's our return on capital employed. And do you want to know how I did that? Well, I'll teach you. Seriously, I'll teach you on a free webinar on Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern time, just head over to felixfriends.org slash webinar, grab yourself a seat. Takes about 90 minutes, maybe. I'll walk you through 
what we do, how we do it. I give you my rules, my systems. And you walk away smarter, happier, healthier, everything. Now, what about semiconductors? We're going to need have to talk about this, right? Well, there is an ETF, which is an index fund that tracks the S&P. That's called SMH. The other big one is for semiconductors is, I want to say it's Vox. Is it Vox? I think it is. Uh, let me know in the chat if it is. And I, I, I will get, get, get through all your questions in a second, but only if we get the likes over 198 likes. That's just depressing, isn't it? And it's a green morning for semiconductors. So this rally here seems a little extended. Now, if there was an indicator that would tell you whether it was extended, it'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Well, there is one. Uh, it's this one down here. And yeah, we are extended and we're coming down, which should indicate that we're topping. But we do get NVIDIA earnings next week, and that could, of course, change absolutely everything. There is a, an indicator, though, that I want to get through and that probably nobody ever looks at. And you can look at two things in the market. And there's some, some data you can look at. You can look at slow money and you can look at fast money. What the heck do I mean by that? Slow money are people who are buying a stock to hold and cherish till death do us part. And then fast money are people who are like, what's the latest thing? What's the latest thing? Give it to me now. And, and they're typically found in Reddit forums. And when you get a lot of fast money coming in, it's typically an unsustainable rally. When you get slow money coming in, it's good. So how do you figure out slow and fast? It's... I was going to say very simple. It isn't. The way you can think about that, if you go into your broker, you will find a bid price and you will find an ask price. And say the bid is 98 cents and the ask is $1.05 or something. And there is a bit in the middle, right? Now, your slow investor, particularly institutions, will not pay 105 or 110 or, or some sort of crazy number. They will be over here and they will want to pay 098, 099. They're conservative. They don't really care if they miss the day. So from that data, we can assess whether the people buying today are the nutters from Reddit or the calm and happy value investor. I mean, maybe they're both bonkers. And right now, on the semiconductors, what can we see? The green line here is, I need a thinner pen. That's the fast money. And you can see a lot of this has been fast money going up. And that makes me concerned about the uh, longevity of this rally. And if you, if you then look at, well, is this accurate? Let's draw a few lines up, for example. Called that peak rather nicely. What about this one here? Pretty, pretty decent. What about this one here? Pretty decent. It's doing an okay job, isn't it? There we go. Called that one there. So doesn't mean it's all going to come to crashing down, but it just seems, it seems a little stretched. And typically the market moves with Apple. Apple is usually the thing that's basically the market. And at the moment, well, there is this great big schism. Schism? What's the word? How do you pronounce it? Let me know in the chat. Is it a soft sh or a hard sk? Um, this gap ought to get filled. And is it Apple who's going to rally up because everybody is walking around with the funny little goggles? Or is it the S&P that's going to have to come down? That's kind of the question. But it's unusual. Very, 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 very unusual for this to happen. And then we look at the NASDAQ compared to small caps. And you're like, nobody does that. No one's ever woken up and said, let me look at how the NASDAQ's performing compared to small caps. Well, as weird bankers do. It's a hedge fund thought because as a hedge fund trader, you're looking at pairs. You're trying to make money out of two things, not just the one. This makes life more interesting. And what have we got here? Well, we have a double top. And the double top usually means 
you guessed it right. Um, it should go down, which would indicate that tech stocks should go down. I IWM is Russell's coming down this morning. And um, other things are happening in the world. The dollar is going back up. Why is the dollar going back up? And it's going up pretty significantly. Is it going to go back up to 2022 highs? If it does, it does a couple of things. It hurts the likes of Microsoft, Netflix, anybody with a large foreign customer base. The people selling to us foreigners sell in euros and yen and sterling and other monkey currencies. And then when they have to convert those monkey currencies back to the good old trusted United States dollar backed by 900 billion of defense spending a year, then they get less good dollars for their monkey currencies from all those pesky foreigners. So it'll hurt earnings if it goes up more and that isn't particularly good. But yeah, this super microcomputer thing, it seems you look at a chart like this and you think this is this has gotta be a this has gotta be a nut job thing. This has gotta be some sort of Reddit thing. Like this was worth like nothing and now it's worth a thousand dollars. But the NVIDIA lot, and I can't disagree with them on this. The forward PE on this is something like 30. NVIDIA is something like 34. So it actually seems cheap compared to NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA isn't exactly cheap, but it doesn't seem unhinged. And what do they do, super microcomputer? It sounds like something from the 1990s, doesn't it? They build servers from the base up, in a sense. So they built their own motherboards and their own, you know, whatnot you put onto top of motherboards. And apparently it allows them to build stuff that is faster and cheaper and offers a lot more power for people who want to build servers. So it's apparently something fairly unique that's needed and required for AI. And I have to take their word on that because I have built a PC. I have not built a motherboard, so I can't really tell you what makes a motherboard particularly good. I would have thought of it as the memory, but apparently it isn't. So this might not seem as unhinged as it does, but yeah, is it overboard? I was going to swear there. I'm just going to weird a word that starts with F and ends with uck. Uh, yeah. And, and, and yeah, of course, it's massively overboard, but you can be overboard for a while. And you can also get these sort of re rating things where somebody, you know, invents a solution for cancer or better yet, AI video. That's what ChatGPT's Sam Altman announced today. Can't remember what it's called, but basically, you can type in. Uh, I'd like to see six kittens walk down a forest path in the sunlight or something, and it'll do that, and it's pretty good. It's very, very good already. So uh, look forward to a YouTube full of nonsensical B-roll uh, coming up <laughs> uh, shortly. Uh, we'll be doing lots of it, of course. Our videos in the future will just be kittens, um, AI kittens. Say, you know, that'll need a lot of computing power, all of those kittens. And um, why is this in here? can't remember, to be honest with you. Oh, but do we want to look at resistance? Maybe we wanted to look at resistance. Probably. So where is the resistance for NVIDIA? Well, there is some at 750. There is a lot more at... Is the pen a little fat today? I think the pen needs, the pen needs some LLY treatment. $800 also. And then at $900... And what does that mean? Well, it's resistance. That's all it is. And then support sits down here at support at 700. And this is, of course, from the glorious piece of software that we are working on, which I'm very excited by, which is called optionswatch.io. Optionswatch.io. Can you read that? Probably not. Optionswatch.io. And you can see where the market's positioned here. So the big fat green lines will tell you where the resistance sits. Uh, so 750, 800, 900 on the, on the way up. And um, 
yeah, that's basically where we're sit sitting right now there with that. All options are at sort of historic highs, not quite the 2021 madness, but pretty, pretty elevated. And that this basically means people are bullish as heck. And what's kind of funny, Goldman Sachs, you know, the lovely bank, the one with the, with the big food stamp program, that one, they pointed this out today saying the Google search trend for call options is at an all time high. And he was, they were basically saying, look, it's unlikely to be institutional money managers who are trying to figure out what a call option is. So it's probably uh, the nutters like you and me, the retail traders, who are trying to figure out what a call option is. And that, again, is typically a sign of exuberance. Everyone's like wanting to go just berserk on something. And um, it typically implies, you know, we might be somewhere like this. Do you remember this? 2021? This was a brilliant article. Artist sells invisible sculpture for $18,000. This was June 2021. Seems like a long time ago, right? Seems kind of madness. The sculpture never existed. There was no drawing for it. There wasn't an NFT. It was just an invisible sculpture that was marked by this. And uh, an artist laughing himself to sleep. Maybe he was just really high and thought it was a good idea. That's kind of stuff that when it comes up, I think, okay, okay, probably time to sell some stock, buy some puts and knuckle down for a little while and, and wait for the market crash to make some money. But I think we're going to go higher. I think we will. And I think we'll enjoy it. It'll be fun. Now, today, $2.4 trillion of options are expiring. Does that mean it's going to go up? Is it going to go down? Is it going to go sideways? Is it going to go round and round? She goes. It's it's a tough question to answer. Yes and no, I think would be the politician's answer. I think it does likely has somewhat of a negative impact this time around. And the other thing it does is it means next week will be, wait for it, wait for it, more exciting <laughs> because a large number of options basically pin the market down. As these expire, we can go more nuts next week. So I'm a little bit more bearish going into next week. Now we will know on Monday where the new options are positioned and that'll tell us a lot. And I'll obviously tell you what, 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 what's going on there. But right now, the options market is very supportive of this rally. We basically are forcing the market to buy stocks. And if you want to understand that again, ask. I'd be happy to. Uh, Matthew, you bought that sculpture. You have no regrets. Brilliant, Matthew. Um, where did you display it? <laughs> um, and no matter what happens, you basically want to learn how you can make money from your money. It doesn't mean you have to do what I do, but you might want to check it out. We've done rather well for ourselves and um, everybody in our community. So come and join me this coming Tuesday. Seems like a long time away. There's a whole weekend in between, but you know how quick time goes. It's almost the end of February. Come and join me at felixfriends.org slash webinar and learn my easy three rules, full automations. Probably once you get it going, take you less than three hours a week. So it's really something you can do while you still are collecting invisible sculptures and everything else. Oh, that's good. Uh, I don't know what you see in it, Matthew. <laughs> That's very, very good. Uh, all righty then, let's have a look at a stock heat map. Microsoft looking good. Um, Amazon, Apple, Meta looking a little dodgy. Google sideways. This is perfect because I'm a bullish trade open at Microsoft and I need small caps to fall a little bit today. And so far they're doing that um, at minus 1.56%. I think we'll be back down at 200, honestly. Uh, that's what I predicted at the beginning of the week. And let's see what happens on the let's see what happens here on the on the minute chart. So in theory, there should be resistance at this 200, this yellow line there. Every time we hit that, we should be doing some selling. So we did it here. We're doing it again now. This week, we've got close there and bounced off. That's basically the theory. And that comes 
straight from my little app here, optionswatch.io. And how do I know that? Because I can open up IWM and there is a big, beautiful green middle finger here at 200. And that means a ton of resistance there and carries forward also into the, into the coming weeks. So we, we shouldn't be closing above 200. We might, but we shouldn't be closing above 200. And as I say, you want to understand how that works? A, you can check out optionswatch.io, links down below in the description and come and join me on the live webinar on Tuesday. It takes you to this page, felixrenzer.org slash webinar. You can see the link down below. So shall we have a look at um, how the media, the miserable media is um, taking ah, another Putin critic decides to jump out of a window and leaves a note saying he loves the dear leader, something like that, I, I imagine. Um, I don't know how he died. Or he was jailed, or he probably decided to smuggle in some rope and hang himself, right? That's typically what people do, don't they? US producer prices increased by more than forecast in January. Yeah, no shit, Bloomberg. Um, that's some real insight there. Let's see what they make of that. Anything else? OpenAI Sam Altman seeks US blessing to raise billions for AI chips. Ooh, the AI rally is going to keep going. And let's have a look. Service costs let the advance rising by more since July. US wholesale prices increased on... Yeah, it's a pretty big increase there comparing to what we're getting. Treasuries extended their sell-off. So basically rate cuts are coming later. The Fed will be concerned by this, says a chief economist who was undoubtedly wrong on forecasting it. Momentum has built up on inflation over the last few years and persists in many corners of the economy. And one reason is service costs increased 0.6%, the most since July. Okay, they don't know anything that we don't know already. Questions, chaps. I'm funny today, am I? I might be in a funny mood. Uh, snarky. All right. Uh, Palo Alto and crowd, goodbyes. Well, if you think that the lovely Russians are going to keep hacking stuff, then, I mean, not just the Russians. Everybody hacks nowadays. Um, great sidekick. <laughs> and then I, I think the whole space should do quite well. Uh, Fortinet as well. Um, but, of course, they're not super cheap but I've done a bunch of videos on some of those. Uh, feel free to, 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 to search for it on, on YouTube. Technical analysis on PayPal, please, says Farouk. Farouk, 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 I shall. PayPal. Is it on a minute chart? Might be more useful on a day chart. What do you think? Do you trade by the minute? People always ask, like, what, what, what time frame should I look at on a chart? I'm like, well, what time frame are you, are you expecting to make a trade a day, trade a week, or a trade every minute? That basically answers your question. So most, most people should look at a, at a day chart. And you want to put in moving averages. 50 is the most important one, I would say. That's the yellow line here. When you're below it, few good things happen. When you're above it, the sun shines and we're below it. We're distinctly below it, which isn't really beautiful. Down another percentage point a day, it's still above the 100 day moving average line there, that sort of wine color stained line. So it's just bobbing sideways. No real, you know, news. Uh, we're getting some more insight into their sort of app improvements. They just launched a savings account, I think 4.3% APR, which is decent. Um, I will make some, planning to make a video on some of the things that they've already implemented. But the one thing I would say, when you see a chart like this and it's going up, right? These four, six candles there, look at the volume. You see what's happening down there? It's going down, which means the steam's running out of the, the recovery. So not a moment to jump in and be massively bullish on this. That's the way I would look at it. Um, AI tickers to watch. Well, I mean, NVIDIA is basically your sort of leading candle for that. And Neo thoughts, Uber thoughts. Neo looked at it yesterday. Yeah, it's up a bit, a bit pre market, which is nice, but hasn't even broken through the thing two days ago. A little bit of speculative money flowing in there. 
not enough. 50 day moving average line is at 710. We get above that, we'll, we'll, we'll talk again. Until then, we're kind of in mourning on that one. Uh, Uber. Very nice bounce. Very nice gap up here. You see that? And then holding on to it. But we're losing a little bit of it today. So in theory, this should be a really bullish setup. But pre-market, we're losing 1.5% here. So it might just be that it's probably just profit taking, to be honest with you. The other thing I would look at is where is the options market on Uber for today, at least, and maybe going into next month. So I'm looking at options watch.io here. And yeah, look, there are, okay, just to explain this, you see all of these green candles here, they all represent call options, and they're all expiring today, and they're all making a boatload of money. At $70, there are 25,000 call options, they're all making a lot of money. So they're all selling their call options today. And that means the market makers, the guys on the other side of the trade, you know, the Muppets with the papers wafting them around on the trading floor, they are actually forced to sell Uber. So when you get that, you get these big breakouts across against a lot of call option volume, even at 65, wow, those guys are pretty printing money, then this is going to put a little bit of a lid on the party till this is all gone and then we can we can start again. SoFi, we can definitely have a look at SoFi. SoFi. And, oh, I did, actually, you see, I really went for it there, didn't I? I did that. I put that on um, on X today. If you want to find me over there, Felix Finance, I think is the handle. We need to figure out how to make all the handles the same. If anybody knows a Twitter guy can get me the Felix Friends handle, that would be useful. Um, they're all slightly different, which is a bit, bit, bit tedious for you guys to find. But yeah, to, okay. there is support at $8, resistance at 9 from this high, and then there is resistance at 10 from the high up there. There's a SoFi video coming out later today as well. So you're getting a preview here exclusively. Uh, and just for that, I'm sure you will all would be able to help yourself, but smash the like button for which I thank you. And I was thinking of putting a trade on down here at that yellow line, 773. Uh, given that we're coming down below the 50 day, I have to rethink that. <laughs> and maybe maybe a little bit lower. Uh, we'll see when the market opens as how that reprices. Maybe we can move that down to like 750 or 740. You know, that would be pretty, pretty good. If we could be at the lower end of these lows here, I'd be very, very happy because look at the trend. The trend is actually good, right? The uptrend's there. Money's flowing in. And we're just sort of bobbing sideways. Just the volume could pick up a little bit. So yeah, there we are on SoFi. Two votes for AMD, uh, Coinbase as well. Let's have a look at Coinbase because that's the that's the more exciting one today, really. Um, stellar earnings from Coinbase. Coinbase is a 4,600% surprise beat. Um, when crypto is in a bull world like it is right now, Coinbase is coining it. They make so much freaking money. They basically have a 100% profit margin because to execute a trade on crypto costs nothing virtually because it's just done in the, you know, Fugazi blockchain. Whereas if you're executing trades on the stock exchange, you got to pay fees to the stock exchange and, and there are stamp, there's taxes and all sorts of stuff you got to deal with. with. With crypto, you don't have any of that. So it's in theory, the most profitable exchange company that you could ever think of. But when people stop trading crypto, they make, don't make any money. So it's very cyclical. That's kind of the problem with it. But yeah, insane earnings. I think they're going to do really well. I think they're going to do really well out of the ETFs. Their stable coin is highly profitable, which could also be very interesting for PayPal. So yeah, it just looks, it looks extraordinary, honestly. I mean, it's, it's fairly rare you get one gap up, two gaps up, three gaps up. Is that a gap up today? No, but yeah, it will be up here um, in a space of like six days or something like that. So it's kind of bonkers. Uh, we are a little bit topping out here at the 186 high up there, which was the 
end of year high. And you got to break through that. But uh, market's open and you can see it. It's already broken through it. It's trading at 190 right now, but that'll be a little bit of resistance. Let's have a quick look where the options sit on Coinbase for today. So we got a feel on that. So the resistance was at 170, 165. That's actually where the resistance sat. We're obviously way above that, but they still have to, I can't get the chart back on the chart. <laughs> the chart's too big. What did I do? Okay, I'm gonna have to send this to, to our lovely development team. Let me take a screenshot of that um, so that, that doesn't happen again. So I can't seem to get it back for some strange reason. Um, but anyway, so there is, is a little bit, when you jump that high, I'd always be like, okay, wait for the next day, see where it settles, and then try to get make some money out of it. Don't jump on the things when they are at sort of near all-time highs. It's, a, it's a generally a bad idea, but yeah, it looks good. Uh, Justin says, Patrick's live trading starts now. Brilliant. Uh, go and join him. That's going to be higher value. Um, one of our head coaches, who's a former floor trader, he's a, an incredible options trader, has been doing it for 20 years, and he he trades live. Um, and you can you can watch him, and you can learn from it, and he teaches it, and he does it, does it every week a couple of times. So uh, come and join him there. If you want to know how you can possibly join him uh, and me, then how do you do that? We have a button for that somewhere, don't we? Where's the button? Where's the button? Push the button. Here we go. Felix runs at org slash coaching. Uh, you can book a call with us, my team, and have a chat with us. Well, that might be the right thing for you to learn from a bunch of investment bankers with about 150 years of experience between us and learn, learn the real deal, learn how the market actually works. Uh, market open, spy red, bear call spread, meet my... Go and join. Uh, go and join Patrick's live call. Uh, seriously, mine. Uh, go, go head over there. That's going to be good for you. Will Polestar go bust? Um, I think they raised some capital just, didn't they? So I, I think that seems a little unlikely right now. I think the EV sector is just, it's just slowed down. It's just slowed down. Maybe Toyota was right. I read an article today that said maybe Mr. Toyota was right that the EV adoption is going to be slower and take a lot longer, and. I think there is some truth in that. I think battery technology and infrastructure isn't quite there yet. I like, you know, Hertz shedding a lot of EVs from their from their fleet, for example. Like, I'm gonna go, for example, to France in a month or so. Am I gonna rent an EV? No. Why not? It takes too long to charge. I know Neo's fixed that, but there is no neo and there is no swapping station there so i'm gonna i'm gonna rent a gas guzzling you know merc or something because i know it's going to be able to take me longer and if i need to refill it i can do that in a minute so i think i think there's still some catching up to do that hence tesla also bobbing sideways a little bit danzo is selling invisible gold you need to be an artist to be able to get away with that sort of shenanigans Uh, Rune, I, I must say I like Tesla more the, the, the less it's going up, honestly, because it just becomes the better business, the better company, the numbers stack up more. So I actually prefer it. Let's have a look at the biggest movers here out of our watch list. TTD, Trade Desk. Whoa, 22% up. Missing earnings, but obviously said something good. That's making that go through the moon. Xpang and Lee are up almost 5%. Neo up 2.6%. Barber up. NVIDIA up 1.5%. Uh, what's down? Kavana is down, but still looking bullish. Open door is uh, looking a little bit dodgy there, but nothing too terrible. Draft King. Very nice. Properly recovered. Here, look at that candle. How often do you see a candle that big? Tell me, is this a bearish or a bullish candle? There's a bit of bit of a lesson. Go on, put it in the chat. This is a massive red candle, but is it good or is it bad? Please tell me in the chat. Stock's down 0.5%. Um, and we'll see, see what happens with that. 
Um, Roku down 18%. We have a look at that in a second. Okay, I'll give it away. I think it's a very bullish candle because what it means is that you drop to all the way to the bottom end here and you've recovered to the top end of that and you are almost down nothing at all. So it's actually quite bullish. Getting a little bit worse right now, but it certainly was at that moment in time. Roku is down 18%, beat on earnings, but clearly pissing off somebody. So yeah, that's a big drop. What's the recent low? Ooh, we were at 55 not too long ago, but that, that could be. Roku is very, very volatile, so be careful with trading it. But I do sometimes trade it after earnings when I see that maybe the market has overdone it. We'll see. Um, SR, you said bad and you retracted your message. That's cheating. <laughs> Uh, no right or wrong answers there, but I appreciate, um, who was that? Kukili, you, you, you got that one right. Larry as well. Nicole says only 20 likes. 289 is what I see, but surely still a short a few. What would Washington say about the market? Oh, I, I'm not really sure. What was his investment philosophy? All righty. Let's have a look then at the day overall. Here is the day overall. A lot of red. Meta and Amazon down. NVIDIA is still massively green. Fat drugs are up. And everything else is looking a little bit unpleasant. Just a little bit. Nothing too terrible, but just looking a little bit on the dodgy side. Let me have a look at IWM. See what that's doing. IWM down 1.2%. Okay, I'm very happy with that. <laughs> 206 is where my trade starts to lose money. Uh, but I, I, my trade is basically making money in this zone here. So that's the zone we want to stay in. And we've moved a little bit too high for my liking. Uh, I'd like that to reverse. And then I'll be able to keep the trade open for a couple of more days. And it probably becomes profitable again. Lucid, says Lucas, I, I'm i not really a fan of Lucid, but I know some people that I do respect who are turning bullish on Lucid. From a chart point of view, they have just become a buy. By my definition, that doesn't mean you should go out and buy it, obviously. But what do I mean by that? Okay, we've broken through the yellow line here. That's a good point. Exceeded yesterday's high. We've exceeded the recent highs here, here, and here, which means in theory, we should be on a tear up till resistant kicks, resistance kicks in around about there at about $4.23. So it looks quite bullish. It does. But earnings are coming up on the 21st. It's coming Wednesday when I'm going on a trip, which I look forward to. I will do my utmost to do these lives. I think we should have a little bit in the jungle, but we should have Wi-Fi. Uh, we'll find out. And and Rune, no, I'm, I'm not bearish on Tesla. I, I'm just saying that it's uh, it actually looks better the longer the longer the market dislikes it. I think we're just in a little bit of a period of adjustment where high interest rates mean people are buying less cars, and I think we are in a consumer recession, and we are in a government spending bull market. So that's sort of the way I see that. Any other questions? Pop them in the you know what and smash the uh, what's not what not and make sure you learn with me on Tuesday after this glorious weekend to come how we are up 13% this year trading 100 odd percent last year, 100 odd percent the year before return on capital employed. And you can do that very, very simply and you can. There we go. That was scary. <laughs> you can learn that simply by signing up for the free live trading training on Tuesday. Felixfriends.org slash webinar. And it'll be led by my chief financial officer. This one. <laughs> Tallulah. Uh, who's a little Hong Kong street kitten who we uh, found. How long ago did we find you? It was quite a while ago. Um, quite a while ago, way more than a decade. And uh, she knows everything about trading. She'll be teaching you. There's another one back there who's the, the, the risk manager. 
What about Bezos selling his share? Says Lee. He's probably buying another yacht or or something or you know enlarging something on the wife. I I, I don't know. So I, I founders sell for many reasons. Doesn't really mean that much. I mean, Bill Gates sold a lot of Microsoft, right? Had he held on to it, he'd be a trillionaire. But they do it because they want to diversify. They want to set up trusts, funds. I don't know. Buy bunkers, yachts, fly to space. Billionaires are slightly peculiar people, especially when they have that many billions. So I really wouldn't read too much into it. It's more, what's interesting is if CEOs are buying stock, that's usually quite a good sign. Selling, eh, could be for all sorts of reasons. Do the Cats tag team Winston? Yeah, they do. They do. They're in charge. Um, he does like them. And they sit together and, and they're quite sweet together. Uh, they rub themselves against his paws if they want to scratch themselves, but uh, they are definitely in charge around here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I will be doing my Saturday breakdown of what's to come tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's also a SoFi video coming out later today, and I wish you a glorious day. Enjoy.